Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa ashadu anna Muhammadan rasulullah. In the name of God, the most merciful, the most compassionate, all thanks and praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the whole universe. I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Peace be upon all of you, dear brothers and sisters. Tonight, inshallah, we are going to focus on Chapter 8, Surah Al-Anfal, inshallah. Uh, before we get into the tafsir, uh, tafsir of the chapter, so I would like to recite the first eight verses, the first page of Surah Al-Anfal. While I'm reciting, if you could please pay attention to the meaning, that would be wonderful, inshallah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يسألونك عن الأنفال قل الأنفال لله والرسول فاتقوا الله وأصلحوا ذات بينكم وأطيعوا الله ورسوله إن كنتم مؤمنين إنما المؤمنون الذين إذا ذكر الله وجلت قلوبهم وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ أولئك هم المؤمنون حقا لهم درجات عند ربهم ومغفرة ورزق كريم كما أخرجك ربك من بيتك بالحق وإن فريقا من المؤمنين لكارهون يجادلونك في الحق بعدما تبينك أنما يساقون إلى الموت وهم ينظرون وإذ يعدكم الله إحدى الطائفتين أن لكم وتودون أن غير ذات الشوكة تكون لكم ويريد الله أن يحق الحق بكلماته ويقطع دابر الكافرين ليحق الحق ويبطل الباطل ولو كره المجرمون صدق الله العظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Dear brothers and sisters, سورة الأنفال is a مدني سورة It was revealed after the hijrah of Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and it is the eighth 
chapter of the Quran with the total of 75 verses. Al-Anfal means the spoils of war, booties. And the surah is all around the battle of Badr, inshallah. According to the Mufassirun, the chapter was probably revealed two years after the Hijrah, which is 624, and specifically right after the Battle of Badr. So before I start the chapter, I would like to give you quick facts about the Battle of Badr. As you, as we all know, when we look at the life of Prophet وسلم, from the beginning, from the birth, all the way until the end of his life, it was full of challenges. So imagine he was born without a father. His father lost, his father passed away uh, before he was born. Later, at the age of six, he lost his beloved mom. And then those who escorted Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed one by one. You know, his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, and his uncle, Abu Talib, and later one of the biggest supporters of his mission, his da'wah, Khadija, his beloved wife, Khadija radiallahu anha. And then later he lost his, you know, beloved sons. And, you know, as if these are not enough, then Prophet وسلم, and his followers, his companions, were persecuted by the um, Meccan elites, so the polytheists. So when he was in the city of Mecca, his life was full of struggle. And then he moved to Medina. They didn't leave Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, alone. Even on the way, when he was migrating from the city of Mecca to Medina, they chased after him and they tried to kill our beloved prophet, peace be upon him. And when he moved to Medina, they still dreamed about killing the prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and ending his mission. And that's why this battle took place. Again, I have to mention this. If you look at the, the battles in the life of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it was all defensive. And the polytheist of Mecca came after our beloved prophet Muhammad and again, the idea was to end this mission and end his life. So the first battle and the first biggest test and challenge for the companions of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam took in the year of 624, in the month of Ramadan. So, and again, the number wise, the Muslims were outnumbered. Uh, you know, the only number for the companions uh, was 313 against um, the polytheists, which they were more than 950 people. So at the end of the battle, we know Muslims were victorious and they lost uh, 14 companions. They were martyred. Uh, and, and from the other side, the opposite side, 70 men uh, were killed. So th these are some little facts. But when we look at the chapter, Surah Al-Anfal, as I mentioned at the beginning, it is all about the Battle of Badr, the verses related to the battle. And the first verse, as you see on the screen, starts as, yes, So they were victorious when you, at that time, are a winner and victorious, you have the spoil of the war and they didn't know how to distribute. So they were asking within themselves, and then, you know, the verse came right away. They asked you, O Muhammad, about the bounties of war. And the response, the answer is, Say, the decision concerning bounties is for Allah and the messenger. So wait until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger makes decision and distribution. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded right away, the consciousness of himself. Not only God consciousness, taqwa of Allah, but also he said, a man that which is between you. And, 
and we will see this again a few times in this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly reminded the companions of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, in every matter, you always obey the teachings of Al-Quran al-Kareem and the tradition of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, only if in kuntum mu'mineen, if you are believers. If you claim that you are believers, then this is the path that you should or you must take. And then right after this verse, the following verses is beautiful and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described those believers. So if you are believers, said, pay attention, pay heed the following verses. And he said with emphasis, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ It is so powerful and is so emotional. He said, the believers are only those who, when Allah is mentioned, their hearts tremble. So that shows the depthness of faith, dear brothers and sisters. The more you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more you feel tremble in your heart and you will be moved by the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or whenever you hear his name. So that's the description of true believers, the first part. And then, وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا So he said, when his verses, the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are recited to them, it increases them in faith. And the idea with us, dear brothers and sisters, reading Quran, reciting Quran, and contemplating over the verses is increasing our faith. We, the only way to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through his verses. Our conversation between us and our creator is through his word, Al-Quran al kareem And inshallah, if we, if our intention is to increase our faith and if we intend this, and inshallah, we will find the, uh, the uh, end result from as Quran or the verse mentioned. Our faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase. Not only that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also added one more piece for the uh, description of the believers. He said, وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ and upon their Lord, they rely. Tawakkul, one of the most important concepts in our faith. So, and then very next verse, verse three, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept describing the characteristics of the believers. And he said, and we, you know, see this constantly in the Quran again, الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ The ones who establish prayer. And from what we have provided them, they spent. And when we hear anything about salah, we always hear also giving away, charity, zakat, uh, you know, almsgiving or sadaqah, charity. Why? Because after faith, the most important thing is our daily prayers, dear brothers and sisters. As we increase our faith through recitation of the Quran, we increase our faith also through our prayers, because in our prayers, we recite Al-Quran al kareem I don't know how many of us sparing a time to sit and open the holy text and read. But I know if we are praying five times a day, at least we are reciting Surah Al-Fatiha and a few chapters or verses. So still, Alhamdulillah, that is good enough to increase our faith. But of course, the ultimate way to increase is beyond farb, beyond obligatory prayers to focus on our nawafil, insha'Allah. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ The believers, those who establish prayer. Through prayer, they strengthen their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ You know, and then they spent whatever we provided them and when they spend, they strengthen their relationship with their brothers and sisters. And with that also, they still strengthen the relationship between themselves and their creators. But these are the, 
the common uh, usage that we see in the Quran, salah and giving is always goes hand in hand. And then very next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala culminated, completed the description by saying, those are the believers, truly. If you are looking for the definition of the true believer, and you go from verses two, three, and this is the final one. That's the true definition of the believer. As we time and again, time, time and time, talk about the muhasabatun nafs, questioning ourselves. I think this is one of the ways we can look at the description, the definition of the true believer and weigh ourselves. Where do we stand? Are we closer to the Ashabu Yemi or the other side, Ashabu Shimal? So that's why Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala said, I am giving you the true definition of the believer and weigh yourself. And then he said, for the reward part, so for them are degrees of high positions. Not only that also, So with you know the forgiveness and the noble provision, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now after you know the the definition of true believers allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know spoke around uh, the battle of badr imagine the battle of badr was the first battle and the first big test for the companions of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they and then and all of them proved their faithfulness and patience and perseverance and the verse 15 advised the companions of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by saying, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, idha laqeetum al ladhina kafaru zahfan, fala tuwalluhum al adbar. Now, whenever you recite a verse, dear brothers and sisters, the verses are not only addressing to, you know, the, the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or the companions, but again, remember on their behalf, it is addressing to us. Quran is a live text. It is not just addressing, you know, the, the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, whom they came uh, 14, 15 centuries before us. No, it is still live and it is still teaching us and guiding us. And now the verse says, O oh, you who believed, when you meet those who disbelieve advancing for battle, do not turn to them your backs in fight or flight. So this is the first one. And then the next one is, they are really connected. So I'm going to bring that one into your attention and then try to explain and elaborate these two verses. And then the very next verse warned the companions of the prophet, peace be upon him, if they turn their backs what will be the consequence? By saying, And the verse said, and whoever turns his back to them on such a day, back to them means the enemy, if they try to flight, flee, but there's some, you know, exception by saying that unless swerving as a strategy or war or joining another company, this is part of the war. Other than that, if you turn your back to the enemy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, has certainly returned with anger upon him from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only that, also, and his refuge is going to be Jahannam, fire. Masir. And wretched is the destination. What a bad place to spend the eternal life. So now let's focus on the theme of this two, these two verses. And the theme is when you face 
be enemy, be patient, be perseverant, and fight against. And this is perfectly fine according to our faith when you are under attack, when your life, when your family is life, and when your religion, um, you know, when your wealth, um, these are actually, actually you know, uh, categorized under maqasid al-sharia. So you have absolute right to defend yourselves. As I mentioned at the beginning, all the battles are defensive. When you're under attack, you're not just gonna say, okay, come and get me. No, you have absolute right to protect yourself and protect your family, protect your wealth, protect your, you know, uh, deen and protect your uh, land, which whatever you live on. So this is, you know, you're right. And, and running away from the enemy is, is considered in our faith, one of the major sins. Why am I saying this? Because there's a hadith. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ijtanibu al mubiqat. So he said, shun the seven great destructive sins. So these are major sins. And the first one, he said, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ashirku billah. So joining others in worship with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. This is one of the major sins. And then the second was sihr, magic. Whoever does magic, this is one of the major sins. That's not good. And then he said, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, وَقَتْلُ النَّفْسِ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ So he said, taking life, which Allah has forbidden, except for a just cause, according to Islamic law. So, sanctity of life, which we covered when we were talking about Surah Al-Ma'idah. And then, the next one, he said, وَأَكْلُ riba, So, consuming riba, usury, being um, unjust towards people. So, as Quran mentioned, أَضْعَافَ mudafa, So, charging, you know, multiple, uh, so high interest and then, try, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, oppressing people financially. So this is also prohibited, uh, one of the major sins. And then, again, we cover this in uh, Surah Al-An'am, towards the end, if you remember, I said, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned uh, the Ten Commandments of Muslims, so-called. So, end of Surah Al-An'am, uh, one of them was, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it over there, and then Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam put it, you know, mentioned as one of the major sins. He said, وَأَكْلُ مَالِ الْيَتِيمِ So, uh, consuming an orphan's wealth unjustly. So, this is also one of the major sins. Uh, and then he said also, وَالتَّوَلِّي يَوْمَ الزَّحْفِ And this is the related to our topic, fleeing the battlefield at the time of fighting. So instead of being perseverant and patient and fighting against enemy, fleeing and, and running away is also considered one of the major sins. And then finally, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, وَقَذْفُلْ مُحْصَنَاتِ الْغَاتِلَاتِ الْمُؤْمِنَاتِ And false accusation to chaste women who never even think of anything touching chastity and are good believers. So these are the seven uh, things, but uh, related to our topic, so what is it? وَالتَّوَلِّي يَوْمَ الزَّحْفِ Fleeing in the battlefield at the time of fighting is considered one of the major sins. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave huge ultimatum saying that if you do that, you're attracting the ghadab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the, you know, like the place for those people will be, um, unfortunately, hell, says the verse. Now, the verse 20 invites the believers back to basics in Surah Al-Anfal, dear brothers and sisters. As I mentioned at the beginning, when verse was talking about obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and his messenger, now the 20 repeated again by saying, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu. Allah is talking to you and I. So us by saying, O you who have believed, Atri'ullaha wa rasulahu. Obey Allah and his messenger. And then, Wala tawalla wa anhu. And do not turn from him while you hear his order. So if you hear anything in the Quran and the authentic hadith 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking from us. And you hear and you know, but you are going to opposite. That is disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Obedience means following the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Absolutely, whatever is considered halal or, or fard or amr or command, you do it. And whatever is prohibited and you shun from it. So, and then at the end, وَلَا تَتَوَلَّوْ عَنْهُ وَأَنْتُمْ تَسْمَعُونَ Do not turn from him while you hear the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the, or, or the order of Prophet, peace be upon him. And the very next verse said, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ قَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَهُمْ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ And do not be like those who say, we have heard while they do not hear. So when you look at the past, you know, the previous prophets or, or their nations, you know, unfortunately, majority of them, the followers, that's what they said. Yes, we know. Yes, we heard. But unfortunately, while they said that we heard, they totally went astray or the opposite way. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning us not to become one of those people. Whatever you hear from the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you accept it wholeheartedly and apply into your daily lives. So, and the, uh, this was verse 21. And when we come to 22, now the question is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually are, are, are give, uh, is, is giving us the answer of the question of who are the worst of living creatures? So, and the verse says, إِنَّ شَرَّ الدَّوَابِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ سُمُّ الْبُكْمُ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ so this is the exact definition. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, indeed, the worst of living creatures in the sight of Allah, in the sight of Allah, are the deaf and the dumb who do not use reason. And again, this is metaphorical. You know, they hear, but they don't understand. They, again, it's like uh, see, but they don't see the Haq, the truth, or they pretend they see, but unfortunately they don't. And then at the end he said, la yaqilun, they do not use reason. Again, we know from the teachings, when you look at uh, the jurisprudence, fiqh, uh, under any, for any of the, the worship, be it salah, fasting, zakah, everything, one of the conditions or being sane or, or having reason. So if, if you have no reason, then you are not obligated with any of the uh, obligations of our faith. You are not mukallaf. But that's the first condition, reason, aql. So that's why we are so blessed, alhamdulillah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is inviting us to use that reason. And again and again, we hear the, this type of um, uh, you know, uh, invitation that we should be using our intellect, our reason. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the worst of living creatures, those who are the deaf and the dumb who do not use reason. Again, deaf and dumb is used as metaphorically uh, here. And then in verse 27, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded, it's all the verses are addressing to the believers and it starts with Ya Yuhal Ladina Amanu. This time he said, لا تخونوا الله والرسول وتخونوا أماناتكم وأنتم تعلمون. And all you who have believed, do not betray Allah and Messenger or betray your trusts while you know the consequence. So what is betraying or how the, the betraying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Messenger takes place? And according to Ibn Abbas, he said betrayal includes both minor and major sins. And then he said as well, those that affect others. So basically disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by not following whatever is prohibited. So that is considered um, betrayed. لا تخون الله والرسول and then, وَتَخُونُ أَمَانَاتِكُمْ And when it comes to amana, the trusts, 
again, the Mufassir on Islam, it refers to the actions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has entrusted and commanded the servants with. So by not following which are prohibited, disobeying the prohibited things, is the, the betrayal of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, betraying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger, and then, you know, not following any order or command is the uh, betrayal of trusts. And then you know, I mean, like while you know, but you are still going against uh, the teachings of Al Quran Al Kareem. So that's considered, uh, in, according to this verse and according to the explanation of Mufassirun, is betrayal of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. And then Allah granted us certain blessings that we may be grateful and obedient to him subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also reminded us the other dimension, which is a test, fitna. And this one is very next verse 28. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ فِتْنَةً وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ عِنْدَهُ أَجْرٌ عَظِيمٌ this is again one of the powerful verses and needs explanation, dear brothers and sisters. Now look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. And know that your properties, your wealth, and your children are but a trial. And that Allah has with him a great reward. So why they are fitna, why they are, you know, test for us. So if you use the wealth and the property property accordingly. And then if you raise, you know, righteous kids and the love of wealth and children don't exceed the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You love them or pay attention according to the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will be fine. But whenever the love of property, wealth, even children, family, goes beyond Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love, then we are in great danger, dear brothers and sisters. And when I say this, I remember the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam, as you all do. And, you know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned his story in Surah Al-Baqarah, which we covered, again, when we were talking about Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started his story with this definition by saying, you know, uh, the, the beginning of the verse was in uh, his portion of the story. And when his Lord tested Ibrahim with certain tests and he fulfilled them all. So Ibrahim السلام, gained the title of Khalilullah being you know intimate friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that was not easy he was so sincere so loyal so hanif as Quran described him and he fulfilled all the tests imtihans and ibtilas that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised him and this verse you know speaking about fitna the wealth and the the children Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned again in two, I mean, like just uh, came to my mind, two surahs, in two surahs. Uh, actually, the surahs are back to back. The first one is in Surah Al-Munafiqun, and the other one is in Surah Al-Taghabu. And I believe these two verses really explain well uh, the verse that I just mentioned from uh, Surah Al-Anfal. The Surah Al-Anfal is 28. Uh, the verse. But in Surah Al-Munafiq, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said again, uh, both actually the verses from Surah Al-Munafiq and Surah Al-Surah Al-Tawabun addressing to the believers, starting both, Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu. In Al-Munafiq said, Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu, la tulhikum amwalukum wa la awladukum an dhikrillah. Wa man yaf'al dhalika fa ulaika humul khasirun. Allah said, O oh, you who believe, let not your properties or your children divert you from the remembrance of Allah. As I mentioned while I was trying to explain the verse 28, 
I said, if the love of, you know, the properties or the children, or the, if they keep you so much, so busy, that diverts you from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then those are fitna for us. And we are in danger, dear brothers and sisters. So we need to make sure that first, haqqullah, the right of our creator, and then the rest. So, you know, let's say you have a business and the time came for Salat al-Dhuhr and you know that you have to just, you know, in first uh, attempt, you need to leave your business aside and then go your prayer, but you are neglecting, you're waiting and you're almost at the time for Salat al-Asr and you're saying, oh, I have still a few minutes or, you know, I can, or, or it's time for Salat al-Asr, you say, oh, well, I will combine, or Salat al-Maghrib. So that means, you know, your wealth is diverting or keeping you busy from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is so dangerous that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, make sure that you fulfill your obligation towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first, and then you can do whatever you wish, as long as you are following the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the next one is from Surah Al-Munafiqun. And this one also says, Ya yuhalladina amanu, inna min azwajikum wa awladikum aduwa lakum fahdharuhum. And this time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took it, you know, one more nudge by saying that, oh, you who believe verily among your wives and your children, and there are enemies for you who may stop you from the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, beware of them. So if your wealth, your wife, your children are taking you away from the members of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then unfortunately, you know, they are not a friend of you. So when you look at the lives of prophets, again, the first one comes to my mind is Nuh alayhi salam. Remember his story and his wife and his children, his son. So they disobeyed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and disobeyed his state fathers or husband and, and became enemy. So, um, and then the next one is, uh, after this one, this is explaining the, the verse uh, of uh, 28 from Surah Al-Taghabun and Surah Tul, um, we said uh, Surah Tul-Munafiqun. I'm getting messages, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna check. I don't know if everything is okay with the... Okay, I just had to check because it says the screen shows the verse one and two. Let me move uh, while I am going. Thank you so much, Sister Anne, for reminding me. So we were on 20... Eight. Thank you so much, Sister Ann. So, and then now we are going to move on uh, the verse uh, 29. And I, as I said, like, it's really difficult to cover all the verses because it has 75. I'm just selecting uh, or highlighting some of the verses, inshallah. As I said before, please... Uh, you know, after the session, whenever you have time, try to read the meaning of all the uh, verses at this. And if you have any questions, you can always email me, inshallah. And then the next verse is 29. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu in tattakullaha yaj'al lakum furqana. O you who have believed, if you have taqwa of Allah, he will grant you a criterion. And wa yukaffir ankum sayyatikum wa yaghfir lakum. And will remove from you your misdeeds and forgive you. And then he reminded us that Allah is the possessor of great bounty. So if you have, again, the condition is if you have the, the God consciousness, taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says that he will grant you a al-furqan or furqanan, a criterion. What is it? So when we look at the tafsir, furqan, we know the, the general meaning of Furqan, it's its criterion between truth and falsehood. But here it is a little bit different. 
according to Ibn Abbas, he said, Furqan here in this context means a way, a way out in this life and the hereafter. So, or it means salvation or aid from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's, that's Furqan. And Allah says, if you have God consciousness, then inshallah, you will, um, you will receive this criterion and that will save you. And then plus, and then we'll remove from you your misdeeds, your mistakes, your, or your sins, and and then forgive you. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the possessor of great bounty. Now, I am going to verse 30. And the verse 30 is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here saying something really uh, important, dear brothers and sisters, sometimes we see, you know, uh, we struggle and we try to understand the things and try to find the meanings uh, behind, you know, every challenge. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِذْ يَمْكُرُ بِكَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِيُثْبِتُوكَ أَوْ يَقْتُلُوكَ أَوْ يُخْرِجُوكَ وَيَمْكُرُونَ وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and remember oh Muhammad, when those who disbelieved plotted against you to restrain you or kill you or evict you from Mecca, but they plan and Allah plans and Allah is the best of planners. Now, when I say this, I mean, this verse is so comprehensive, dear brothers and sisters. When I read this verse, the life of our beloved Prophet وسلم, goes through my mind or in front of my eyes from again, as I mentioned at the beginning, from day one all the way until the end of his life. When you read Siyar nabi and his life was full of struggle and challenges. And people of Mecca, politics, Mushrikun were after him constantly. They were trying to harm him. They were trying to kill him. They were trying to end his mission. They were trying to, you know, when they were doing this, they were doing some sort of, you know, plans or the plot against our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, وَيَمْكُرُونَ وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهُ So, but they plan, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala plans. And, وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ And Allah is the best of the planners. They tried to harm our beloved Prophet, but they couldn't when he was in Mecca, when he was in Medina, and after all the battles, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions. And then at the end, towards the end of his life, he said, لكم لكم So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, now today is the day that I completed, you know, your religion, your religion, Al-Islam. And no one remembers those who tried to kill our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if they remember, they don't remember them in a good way, of course. They, you know, just imagine Surah Al-Masad, Tabbat Yada Abi Lahab. We remember him, but not in a good way. Abu Lahab called our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Abtar. But what happened? Abtar means Qara. Nobody remembers him in a good way, but everyone remembers our, prophets, our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and they will still remember until the last day, last minute in this world. And Allah all around the world, constantly the word of Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And then Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah, constantly, every minute, imagine our globe. So somewhere, a Muslim brother or Mu'adhan is calling Ashhadu Anna Muhammad al Rasulullah. I bear witness that, you know, Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and what a beautiful and what a best plan. They plotted against Prophet to end his life and his mission, but unfortunately, they failed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala planned something better, and then Prophet still lives in our hearts and our minds and we follow his teachings and his footsteps. 
So, وَيَمْكُرُونَ وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ And remember, dear brothers and sisters, whenever you face difficulty, you know, always remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the best plan for us. And the next verse, I'm going to jump quickly, um, the 45. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse said, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu. Again, all the verses here addressing to us. إِذَا لَقِيْتُمْ فِئَةً فَثْبُتُوا وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Or you who have believed, when you encounter a company from the enemy forces, stand firm and remember Allah much that you may be successful. Again, this verse actually uh, explains uh, the verse that I, uh, it, I think it was on verse 16, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was saying, telling us that don't turn your back to enemy and try to flee. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you know, instead of doing that, when you encounter enemy, just stand firm. فَثْبُتُوا So, and then وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا And remember Allah much. That way you will find strength in yourself. When you have the faith, inshallah, you will have the courage to face the enemy, says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then again, the third time Allah reminded us, وَأَطِعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلَ وَتَذْهَبَ رِيحُكُمْ وَاصْبِرُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ This is full of wisdom, dear brothers and sisters. And please, please spend time and contemplate over these each and every teachings of the uh, verses from Surah Al-Anfal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا نِزَاعُ means like do not quarrel, do not fight between yourselves. وَتَذْهَبَ رِيحُكُمْ If you do that, you will lose your courage. Don't do that. So, wasbiru. Instead, be patient. إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ So, Allah is with the patient. So, dear brothers and sisters in a community or a family, you might have, you know, we might have our differences or disagreements. But from this verse, we should never, ever quarrel or fight. Otherwise, you know, we lose the harmony and the strength, be it in the family or in the community. Instead, we have to be understanding, be patient towards our family members, towards our brothers and sisters in order to keep our unity. Otherwise, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you will lose your, you know, courage and your strength. And the verse 61, this is really important as well. This time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving us an important principle by saying that وَإِن جَنَحُوا لِسَّلْمِ فَجْنَحْ لَهَا وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ And if they, they means enemy, incline to peace, then incline to it also and rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ so if the enemy comes and attacks you, you have absolute right to defend yourself. But if they incline towards silm, which is uh, the name of our religion or the root word of our religion, silm means peace. Allah Islam is the, the, the religion of peace. So it says, you know, if they incline towards peace and you do the same thing and always put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he is all hearing and all knowing. And then uh, the very next verse here says, وَإِن يُرِيدُوا أَن يَخْتَعُوكَ فَإِنَّ حَسْبَكَ اللَّهُ هُوَ الَّذِي أَيَّذَكَ بِنَصْرِهِ وَبِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ But if they intend to deceive you, if they go to the, op they go to the enemy, go to the opposite direction, then sufficient for you is Allah. You know, you put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be firm and find, fight against them to protect yourself and your family members and your land. It is he who supported you with his help and with the believers, says. And the, I will finish with the next verse because we are at the end of our time. So this is really important. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here says, you know, it comes from the end of this verse, actually. 
huwa alladhi ayyadaka bi nasrihi wa bil mu'minin so he who supported you with his aid and with the believers and then also this both combination of 62 and 63 wa allafa bayna qulubihim so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought together you know their hearts their hearts means the companions his followers and look what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said law anfaqta ma fil ardi jami'an ma allafta bayna qulubihim walakin allah allafa baynahum if you had spent all that is in the earth you could not have brought their hearts together walakin allah allafa baynahum but allah brought them together only allah could put ta'lif bring their hearts together innahu azizun hakim because he is exalted in might and wise when i say this verse i remember the verse from surah al imran and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you remember said in in surah al imran wadkuru ni'mata allah alaykum idh kuntum a'da'an fa'allafa bayna qulubikum fa asbahtum bi ni'mati ikhwana so he said and remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's favor on you for you were enemies one to another but he subhanahu wa ta'ala united your hearts so that by his grace you became brothers otherwise actually he said and you were on the brink of a pit of fire wa kuntum ala shafa hufratin min an-nar fa anqadhakum minha but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved you from it what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about here you know before prophet peace be upon him moved to the city of medina the al ansar had two big tribes al aws wal khazraj so they were enemies toward each other i mean like the hatred existed between them they were constantly fighting but when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came and he came with that beautiful message inna al mu'minuna ikhwa so the believers are nothing but brothers and sisters so they became so close and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned here wa allafa bayna qulubihim so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought together their hearts and only allah did because of the verses because they had faith in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they became brothers and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning here this saying that that took place only because of the blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again you know one thing that we should remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not constantly exalting you know our beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or or companions they were victorious but again because what happens when you are successful when you are victorious what is the biggest danger arrogance so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was constantly you know like hitting on that to just you know be humble and and remember that the victory came through uh, the help of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again he mentioned here as well and we saw it in you know other uh, uh, chapters as well that he sent angels uh, to help you to aid you so do not be arrogant do not be boastful that you beat the enemy even though you were only 300 some numbers against you know triple 950 enemy so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly reminded you know uh, the companions and also again the lesson that we can take and learn whenever you are successful and victorious you name it but always keep your composure your or your humility and when i say this i remember when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam entered the city of mecca without any bloodshed he was so hum- humble and his head was so you know down and he was victorious and and the city that he was entering the the, the people of the mecca they forced and moved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to leave his birth city that that's that's the lesson that i think we can learn from this beautiful chapter surah al anfal as i you know as the verse said in 64 ya ayuhan nabiy hasbukallah wa man ittaba'aka min al mu'minin 
So it said, O Prophet, sufficient for you is Allah and for whoever follows you of the believers, you know, for all of you always find sufficiency in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And just a brief towards the end, especially the last verses here, you know, uh, 72 and 73 and 74, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, you know, mentions some of the certain qualities of the believers. And those are in the amanu wa hajar wa jahadu bi amwalim wa anfusim fi sabirillah. So indeed, those who have believed and emigrated and fought with their wealth and lives in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and those who gave shelter and aided, they are allies one of another. So th that means, you know, when the time comes, if you're a believer, if you need to migrate from one place to another place uh, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's what the, 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 the friends of Allah, uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. And if the time comes for us, we should be able to do that. And then wajahadu, struggle on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your wealth and your life. Bi amwalihim wa anfusihim fi sabilillah. So, and then the, the, the following two verses again said, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بَعْضُمَا بِيَوْ بَعْضُ The opposite of the believers, of course, the kafirs, kuffar. Um, they are the friends of each other, allies of one another. Um, and then finally said again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought into our attention that belief and immigration, migration, and then struggling on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and helping each other. Um, so remember again, there are so many things to say, of course, for this verse too, when the muhajirun came from the city of Mecca, the companions of Prophet to Medina, what did, what, what the companions in, in Medina, the Al-Ansar did, uh, the helpers, they opened their hearts, not only that, also their homes and everything. They said, you know, this is my wealth, half is yours. So this is my house, half is yours. Pick the better, you know, portion, whichever portion that you want. So uh, that's the quality um, which Al-Ansar uh, had. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards the end praised that quality and then described as humul mu'minuna, ula'ika humul mu'minuna haqqa. So they are the ones, uh, true believers. Uh, we will finish Surah Al-Anfal here. Uh, now, next time, inshallah, I will be focusing on Surah Al-Tawbah another important and beautiful chapter, repentance. Uh, but now let me call the event and let's pray Salatul Aisha, insha'Allah. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar.
یہ اچھا نام نہیں رکھ لیا اللہ سمع اللہ لمن حامد اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم یہ کہاں ہے الله اكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله العظيم الذي لا إله إلا هو اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تبارك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤوده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم صدق الله العظيم سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله الله اكبر الله اكبر الله أكبر. الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم أبسط علينا من بركاتك ورحمتك وفضلك ورزقك اللهم إنا نسألك النعيم المقيم الذي لا يحول ولا يزول اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان وجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك وطاعتك اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه و الله بستو on us from your blessings mercy, grace and provisions O Allah, we ask you for the eternal delights that never ends or fades away. O Allah, make faith dear to us and beautified in our hearts and make disbelief, sin and disobedience dislike to us and make us among the rightly guided. 
Oh Allah, we ask you for guidance. We ask you for taqwa, virtue, and sufficiency. Oh Allah, you are the controller of the hearts. Please turn our hearts to your religion and obedience. Oh Allah, show us the truth as true and inspire us to follow it and show us falsehood as falsehood and inspire us to abstain from it. Allahumma shfi mardana warham mawtana. Oh Allah, please give quick healings for those who are sick. Oh Allah, please bless the souls of those who passed away. Allahumma fil lil mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat innaka samian qaribun mujibu ta'awat. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahmani r-Rahim. آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربي والمؤمنون كل آمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله وقالوا سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا مسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت ربنا لا تآخذنا نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين صدق الله العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم الصراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين ما الله سبحانه وتعالى accept our prayers and duas dear brothers and sisters ما الله سبحانه وتعالى bless you and bless your family members Please keep each other in you know, uh, your prayers and always remember us in your du'as and you are in my prayers. But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you uh, whatever is best for you, inshallah, whatever is khair for you in this world and hereafter. Uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And please remember on Thursday, we have a uh, fireside chat, spiritual fireside chat. We are back again. And my guest is going to be Salam al Marayati, and his topic will be why the mosque. So it seems a really interesting topic. So please join us, inshallah, and uh, same time at 9 p.m. Thursday. And until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Please take care of yourselves and have a great sleep and night. <laughs>